It is now my pleasure to present Startup Talk on Developing Highly Targeted Therapies for Treatment of Brain Cancer. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Greg Stein from Curtana Pharmaceuticals. Hi, hey, Carrie. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, I need to share my screen. Uh, let me do that and share. And there we go. Can you uh, see my screen there? Yes, we can. Are we good? Yep. Very good. So uh, my name is Greg Stein. I'm the um, founder and president uh, and CEO of Kryptana Pharmaceuticals. Uh, where we are focused on developing targeted therapeutics for the treatment of a variety of different types of brain cancer. Now, the company started back in 2013, and it was really serendipity. I had another venture-backed company that uh, I had founded and, and was uh, helping to run and had come across some literature suggesting that the work we were doing at that com company might have value in brain cancer. I went up to uh, the university to talk to the head of neuro-oncology, neuro who at the time was, was Dr. Kessery. And um, during the course of the conversation, he said, I've been working on some, something for the last 10 years, started at Dana-Farber and now uh, here at UCSD with my colleagues. And I think it could really change the way brain cancer is treated. But I, you know, I don't know a lot about companies and drug development. Would you just take a look at it and let me know what you think? Well, long story short, I love the idea and I really like Dr. Kessery and, and his approach. Um, and so we started a company, uh, started another company and we're at the point now where we have a, a lead program for treating newly di diagnosed GBM. Over the last several years, we've received funding from Cure Science. Uh, we received a very large grant from the state of Texas through their CPRIT program. And because of that, we moved the company to Austin, Texas back uh, in 2014. And we're still based here in Austin, Texas. We've received, uh, recently we got a, received a grant from the National Brain Tumor Society to look at the immunomodulatory effects of, of our lead drug. And we also have a research collaboration going with one of the top 10 big pharma companies to look at the combination of our drug with their drug. So we've made a lot of progress since the company was founded uh, and based uh, all from that initial uh, serendipitous meeting with Dr. Kessery several years ago. Um, I think Dr. Kessery probably covered this and, and this group knows well um, how challenging a disease glioblastoma is. And in kids, uh, there are uh, two other types of brain cancer, pediatric high-grade gliomas and medulloblastoma, uh, which also have uh, in many cases uh, an, an equally dismal prognosis. So our lead program is focused on hitting a target called OLIG2. And OLIG2 is a transcription factor that's associated with cancer stem cells and it's found in all gliomas. And over the last several years, we've been successful with our work and we've developed a drug we're calling CT179, which is a potent orally available OLIG2 inhibitor. And I'll briefly go through the efficacy data showing survival benefit in multiple preclinical animal models. We've shown that the drug is, is quite safe. We don't see any significant toxicities at the dosage levels that we think we're gonna be uh, delivering. We've got a good handle now on the, the mechanism of action. That, that is how the drug actually works. We've completed our GLP toxicology studies, uh, which are required for submission of uh, an IND application. We've completed our GMP manufacturing. We have FDA orphan drug designation for the treatment of gliomas. And we have FDA rare pediatric disease designation for the treatment of medulloblastoma. We've met with the FDA, talked about our plans. And uh, moving forward, the goal is to file an IND to do a phase one clinical trial on newly diagnosed MGMT on methylated GBM patients in combination with radiation therapy. So what is the underlying problem that we're facing? Uh, and in a simplistic way, the tumor is quite heterogeneous and in it is a subpopulation of OLIG2 expressing cancer stem cells as uh, denoted by these little green dots here. Now these OLIG2 expressing cancer stem cells are chemo and radiation resistant. 
So we treat with our standard of care, these cells survive, and almost all these patients end up getting tumor recurrence. Now, what's interesting about OLIG2 and why we would think about targeting it in gliomas is that um, it's involved in normal brain development embryologically, early first few years of life, but then once your brain's fully developed, its expression is by and large not, uh, not present. But the tumors use that developmental, that growth driving effect to, to its advantage. And it's been shown, and this is all in the literature, that it drives tumor initiation, uh, promotes resistance to radiation, drives invasion. These cancer stem cells are actually immunosuppressive and it's highly expressed in all the glioma. So it really gives us, gives us an opportunity to go after a target that's just in the cancer and not in normal tissue. And so what we're gonna do, uh, the plan is to combine CT179 with standard of care to not only debulk the tumor, but eliminate these cancer, the uh, cancer stem cells that are OLU2 expressing and thereby delaying or ideally preventing tumor recurrence. The drug we have has great drug-like properties. It uh, can be taken by mouth. It has uh, a long half-life, which means we can dose it once a day. So it becomes a once a day pill. Um, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, which is absolutely critical. 98% of cancer drugs don't cross the blood-brain barrier. And so this was one of our key requirements when we were developing the drug and we were successful in that. We get good drug tissue levels. It's well tolerated, as I said. It's not hard to make, it's inexpensive to make, and we don't have any formulation issues. So we have, from at least from a pharmacologic perspective, a great looking drug candidate. I'll quickly go through some of the data that we have. Um, in our first experiments, we looked at just uh, our drug alone in uh, what's called an orthotopic model. That's where we uh, inject the, the drug directly into, or I'm sorry, the cancer cells right into the mouse brain. And we see in a couple different models here that even alone, that we're gonna see a survival benefit. And remember the cancer stem cells are just a small percentage of the cells in the overall tumor. So we were quite encouraged to see this initial result um, in as a monotherapy. Uh, we then put it into a flank model, looking at combination with temozolomide and radiation. And the green line is, our drug, temozolomide radiation, and the red line is a combo. And as we can see here in two different models, the combination worked quite well as we had projected. So we then went into uh, orthotopic models where we in, put the cancer cells in the, in the animal's brain. And here we see compared to radiation alone, which is the green line, when combined with radiation, we see a significant benefit. And compared to temozolomide radiation, we see a, a significant trend toward benefit there as well. And then here's a couple more models where the blue line is the combination. And this is the group that is that does the best. And then here's a, me a medulloblastoma model where the combination of our drug plus radiation uh, is superior to either treatments alone. So across multiple models, we've been able to show that the drug is effective. It is safe at therapeutic doses. Like other cancer drugs, it uh, kit is successful at uh, directly killing the cancer cells, but it also makes the radiation more effective. It limits tumor invasion and uh, should have an immunomodulatory effect by killing these cancer stem cells. And then uh, just briefly, here's our plan going forward. Uh, once we file our, our IND, we'll do a phase one study and a, um, and a, a PK study. We're also continuing to do preclinical work in medulloblastoma. And, and looking at other combinations. Our big pharma collaboration, I can't talk about that right now, but the data is very, very encouraging. And this will all lead into uh, several phase two trials that could lead to um, clinical proof of concept and ultimately uh, approval. So very excited about uh, where the program's going. Uh, to kind of dovetail with uh, what Dr. Kessery was saying, this will probably complement a number of other potential therapies. We see this ending up being uh, just another arrow in the quiver of uh, drugs that are available uh, to doctors like Dr. Kessery in this space. But the uh, preclinical data thus far looks um, very encouraging and really looking forward to moving this program forward into the clinic. And with that, I will stop and uh, take a few questions.
Fabulous. Thank you so much. Uh, we so appreciate it. question here. Uh, how do we arrive at the candidate? Um, the original work that was done by Dr. Uh, uh, Kessary and his colleagues, um, they screened large commercial databases of available compounds, identified a number of uh, compounds that uh, looked promising. And we, take, we took the best one of those and then did a very robust uh, medicinal chemistry program around that and ended up developing close to 600 different analogs. And CT-179 was the best one of those 600. But the original work was done. And this, is, uh, this work's been published. Um, original work that gave us the idea came out of Dr. Kessery's lab. Are there, uh, if there's no other questions, uh, I'll just say thank you very much and turn the, Carrie, turn the, this back over to you. Oh, uh, Delan uh, asks, how does CT-179 make radiation treatment more effective? So there's data showing that OLIG-2 prevents the acetylation of P53 um, and that makes the uh, cancer cells resistant to the tumor uh, or to the radiation, I'm sorry. And so by uh, blocking OLIG-2, uh, this acetylation is, is prevented. P53 is allowed to do what it does and the cells end up uh, being much more sensitive to the radiation. So there is a, a, a well understood mechanism by which uh, OLIG-2 is a potent radio sensitizer. And with that, I'll stop and, and thank you very much for your, for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Stein. That was fabulous.